Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Um, tonight I want to do something a little bit new. Not necessarily new to me, but at least new for the channel. Uh, I don't normally do a whole lot of Switch stuff, mostly because I'm pretty happy with where my Switch is at and I haven't been doing a lot with it. Uh, but I did recently come across something that I definitely, definitely want to get taken care of. And um, for those that, you know, just for... I don't know where I'm going with this, but just to show you, you know, my Joy-Cons work, everything's happy. Um, that might not necessarily be the case at the end of this video, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so what I want to do, set this aside because I'm not actually going to do anything with the tablet. Um, oh, right there for now. What I want to do is I want to work on the Joy-Cons. Now, these are obviously some custom Joy-Cons. Uh, I did, all I did was reshell this left one with a D-pad uh, housing instead of the original four up, down, left, right buttons. And this right one, of course, I reshelled with a regular housing, but with uh, Super Famicom style buttons. But I also added an RCM button on this one. And there's some extra wiring in there for a bodge that I had to do when I accidentally uh, fuck this one up, um, the technical term. And uh, anyway, it works. I'm not going to be bothering with it, assuming I don't break it again. But what I do want to do is I want to install these hella nice new buttons that I have. So I got these from a modder by the handle Mad Morta. And if you haven't heard of her, highly suggest you look her up. She makes some primo shit. Um, and she has some very, very, very excellent resin cast buttons here. Uh, so I want to see if I can get some installed. She even had a D-pad for my custom housing. So in this Joy-Con, I'm going to be installing the D-pad, um, the screenshot button, and the minus button. And then in this housing, I'm going to install the four face buttons and the plus button. I don't have a home button. I don't know if um, that was an accident on my part or Mad Morta's part. Either way, I don't, it, I don't know, it doesn't really matter that much to me. Um, this button does have an LED in it, even though it's not used for anything as far as I can tell, but whatever. We'll come back to this one. I'll set that aside for now. Um, so obviously I've taken these apart and reshelled them before. It's honestly really not that difficult they are super tedious if you have to fuck with the shoulder buttons, though. And there are also... oh, I just noticed my shell is cracked. I guess that's what I get for actually using these damn things. Um, but yeah, they're, they're super tedious. There's a lot of little pieces, a lot of ribbon cables. This is one of the most advanced controllers uh, ever developed. Most controllers, you know, you pop it open, there's just a little PCB, maybe a battery. No, this thing has a whole shitload of little pieces. And, quite frankly, I do not even remember how they come apart. Oh, okay. Once you got the four screws out, the uh, rail is connected to the back housing here. You gotta be careful because there's ribbon cables and more ribbon cables and there's got to be more slack. I think this ribbon cable is tucked under. Yeah, there we go. And before I do anything, I learned my lesson on the other one last time. We're going to unplug the battery so I short nothing out and have to replace a fuse. Because that isn't very much fun. Okay. We'll just pop that out of there. And I think we can pop that out without removing anything else. Putting it together is a little bit more difficult, but we'll uh, burn that bridge when we get there. So these two ribbons are the uh, uh, SL and SR buttons, the LEDs and the 
Joy-Con, the rail connector. We'll set that aside for now. Shouldn't need it. Also shouldn't have to touch these shoulder buttons, really. Oop, that is the wrong screwdriver. You need two different screwdrivers to take apart stock Joy-Cons. Um, my left, my right Joy-Con doesn't have any more tri-wing screws in it though, so I only need one for that one. But, a stock Joy-Con, you need uh, two screwdrivers. Alright, so that is the third ribbon cable. And uh, so if you're if you got drift on your Joy Cons and you need to replace the uh, joysticks, uh, by the way, try cleaning them before you do anything else. That usually works or usually helps at least. Um, if there's actually a problem that you need to replace them, this is about as far as you need to go. Just pulling a hair out of there. Okay. Of course, you'd pop out. You'd have to pop out this ribbon cable so you can pop out that screw, that screw, that ribbon cable, and then the whole module just lifts out. But, oh, well, actually, let's do that. Why not? I don't have to, but it's easy enough. Where the heck are my tweezers? I keep losing the Jesus things. By the way, I've been wanting to do this video for like a week. I've, I'm so stoked about these buttons no idea. I haven't had the time until now, though. I, uh... Oh! Mad Morta also hooked me up with some uh, Game Boy Micro buttons. So this is that silver one that I was refurbishing a while back. It, has, it still has the blue shoulder, start select, power, and uh, volume rocker. But she hooked me up with some green face buttons, and these are so much better than the aftermarket ones. It's not even funny. And they match my faceplate, which is hella nice. Anyway. Distracted. Okay. That's my Phillips screwdriver. Alright. So to pop out the uh, joystick, it's just these two screws. And by the way, these parts are universal, so you can put the left one in the right Joy-Con, or the right one in the left Joy-Con, or whatever. You know, they're not... This isn't paired to the left Joy-Con, is what I'm trying to say. All right. We're in the home stretch, folks. One. Two. Oh, just two screws. That'll flip up. You should unplug this haptics motor, but I don't actually have to remove it. I just need to flip it out of the way for now. And we're going to remove the old D-pad. Screenshot button. Pop in. New screenshot new d-pad button and I need to remove that but first I'm gonna I'm gonna put this back oh I thought that was one uh, one membrane I didn't realize that was two separate things because they were stuck together Ooh, whoopsie that down and I gotta put those screws back you don't have to remove the uh, joystick by the way I just did because I figured it would be easier and uh, just in case someone actually uses these videos for instruction or something else, you know, why not? Okay, so there's that. I don't think up and left are aligned properly because they're not clicking, but they look fucking sick. Of 
or it's just too tight. That works too. Don't forget, this is aftermarket hardware, so, or at least aftermarket housing. Yeah, there we go. Just a matter of not making it too tight. Perfect. All right, one more. All right, so this PCB is attached to this PCB. So even though I only removed the screw for one, I cannot remove that completely. I'm just gonna try and slip in from the side. And I don't think the direction on this matters. That is to say, I don't think there's a difference between the top and the bottom. There's obviously a difference between uh, 90 degree rotations. That's fine. Okay. Let's uh, put it back together now, I guess. Hopefully I didn't break anything. And what screws do I use? I guess in this one, I already forgot. There should be another one somewhere. I'll just do the one for now. I guess this one? Looks like the same screw. Now we got to plug these back in. And I really hope I don't fuck these up because these are my only sets of Joy-Cons. And by the way, I just want to throw this out there. Uh, just f anecdotal. This is a launch model switch, which, and these are the Joy-Cons that came with it, um, I think. I'm not 100% sure, actually, so I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't say that. But, ah, okay, that's where that last screw goes. My Joy-Cons have no drift. Granted, I don't necessarily use my Switch as much as uh, some other people. And I'm not saying that the drift problem is overrated or whatever. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just, for anecdotal purposes, this is a launch model. And I've had zero hardware issues that weren't my own damn fault. And unfortunately, you do have to plug this stupid rail in. Or at least it's a lot easier if you do. You can detach the rail from the back housing. There's just one screw. But... It doesn't, damn it. I don't think it makes it that much easier. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in. Don't forget to attach the ribbon cable. This is why people say reshelling Joy-Cons is difficult. 
But honestly, the most difficult part, I think, is getting this shoulder button into this part of the housing. It's also a really thin ribbon cable and really easy to rip, which makes that whole process so much more fun. Just making sure they're down all the way so there's no rattle. I'll loosen that one off a bit. No? That one? I'm thinking the uh, membrane isn't lined up properly. It looks lined up properly. I don't know. It feels right now. Let's get this battery in here. I'm going to use the plastic tool because fuck replacing a fuse on this thing. And oh shoot, I got to tuck this in. I forgot to tuck it in. Should slide back in. But you've got everything lined up. There we go. And then you just got to put the four trialing screws back in. Or Phillips if you use the ones that came with your aftermarket kit, but really don't unless you have to. The OEM screws are so much better. And I'm pretty sure these things remember their pairing after you remove the battery. So I think I should be good to go. I got blinking lights in. That's a good sign. Let's see. Yeah. Seems to still work. And change weapons, so up and down is working. Right, camera works. But my left is not working. I think I might need to reseat that. Or, there it goes. Stuck down. Yeah, I need to take that apart and play with it again. In a sec. Sorry. I don't mind the sound, but I just realized it's probably really obnoxious. But yeah, that works. That probably works, but I can't test that in the police station. At least not without going down to the training. But yeah, I'm happy with that. And obviously I didn't break my Joy-Con. I gotta reseat that. So, um, I don't know, it's been about 20 minutes. And my camera likes to overheat after about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna take a quick break, let the camera cool down. 
And I'm probably going to pop this apart and uh, see if I can't figure out what's going on with this button here. And um, when I come back, I'll update you on that and we'll start on this one. Alright, so maybe I'll do a fancy picture overlay and show you what was really going on. Uh, but I did take this apart, put it back together. I did have to file down the button a little bit. Looks like there might have been a minor mold issue, but now it's working perfectly fine. As you can probably not see because of that glare, um, up and down is working just fine. Picture and shit, I don't want to see that. And notes. So I got all my buttons working just fine. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys what happened. But for now, let's go ahead and get started on this button. So like the right Joy-Con, this would have four tri-wing screws, except that I didn't use those tri-wing screws when I reshelled this one. I don't quite remember the reason. Um, maybe I did something dumb and stripped them out, but this screw is already stripped. That's fucking awesome. Maybe I can get it with a different bit here. The importance of using the proper bit the first time. Definitely don't put that back in. My problem is I have a set of, set of screwdrivers that I like, and I tend to use them for everything because they're close enough to everything. That's how you strip screws. All right. So once you've got your three tri-point screws out, uh, it's going to come apart the same way as the other one. The rail will slide off attached to the back housing. You can flip that over. And then there's two ribbon cables. But I'm going to pop out the battery first and foremost. Just a little bit of adhesive. Holding it in. Alright. So now you can probably see what's going on and uh, what I did. The, uh, the button itself that I wired in there, it's just wired up directly to the rail connector. Nothing fancy at all. And it's super glued to the shell, so even though I don't use it for anything whatsoever at all anymore, it's not going anywhere. So I'm just going to leave it installed. The other thing I did, you can see down here underneath the ribbon cable. Um, I fucked up the first time I took this apart and modded it. Maybe it had something to do with this button. I don't think so. I think I just stuck a metal tool in there that I shouldn't have stuck in there and I shorted something out so I had to replace the fuse but I didn't have the proper size um, surface mount fuse so I used what I had and I had to put it on these uh, pigtails here just to uh, get it to fit because this one is entirely too large. But I mean it's the same specs or close enough so I'm not worried about it. Anyway enough tangent. Let's continue taking this apart. So the battery holder it looks like it has three screws just like the other side but they're in a different spot and there's a twist. There's a little antenna or something. You can either pull that out or disconnect it. And there's a little ribbon cable and this one is the one that's a pain in the ass because of how much shorter the connector is. So yeah, that, that's probably what I did. I probably had this connected when I was futzing about. And I shorted it with uh, my metal tweezers or something. Okay. So I'm going to unplug both of these. 
and you should use a plastic spudger for that, not your metal tweezers, but I'm a rebel. Okay, that's disconnected. Yeah, you can see what I did there now. If you guys are curious about the repair, I'll post my uh, Reddit thread, a link to it. But, hopefully, I don't need to do anything with that. You know what, that's going to stay plugged in because I'm not having any luck with that. Okay, so it looks like, like the other side, there's only two screws. Again, which is easy enough. Move that button and the spring before it fucks off on me. And I think with this one it might be easier to just remove this joystick, or at least to loosen it off so it can move around a bit. Yeah, that extra slack is all I need, I think. If you want to remove this fully, there's another ribbon cable right here. Two, actually. I don't know how... I don't know the easiest way to get them out, but I don't need to remove it fully because I'm just getting at these buttons here. upside down. Is that not where Y goes? Oh, that's not where Y goes. Duh. In my defense, Nintendo has this all fucking backwards. You'd think Y would be like if it were an axis. An axis. Y would be on the Y axis, not the X axis. A and B is fine. I just always get X and Y confused. Alright, so A, I think, needs a little bit of trimming or something, because it's not sitting flush in there like it should. Or it is, never mind. Sorry, jumped the gun on that one. Okay. Now, if you did like me, when you drop this back in, don't forget to uh, route the ribbon cable for the joystick. And I'm going to put these two screws back in, flip it over, and try it out. X and Y click, B e and A do not. Oh, A does, it's just not clicking right. So the easy solution is to back off the screws, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually fix it.
But on that note, because I'm going to be going back and forth, I am just going to remove this freaking joystick. Less stress on the ribbon, less stress on me. Okay. So, in this case, I think sandpaper might be a little bit easier. So let me grab some. Don't worry, I'm not gonna pause it. I'm not going far. But if I take shortcuts, okay. There we go. I'm just gonna use some 220 grit that I had sitting around. What I'm gonna do. Oh, I see why A wasn't sitting flat. There's a little thingy. Maybe I should test this before sanding. Yeah, I'm gonna test it. Oh, fuck. Or I'm gonna lose it. Okay, we'll come back to that. But B, that one doesn't have a little thingy, no. Now it goes quick, because this is 220 grit, but also because resin very soft. Okay. Should have grabbed my uh, my uh, calipers. Could have seen how much I was taking off. All right, I'm gonna pause this video for a minute. Go look for that button under my dark desk. These dark buttons. I found it though. Drop A back in there. Oh, interesting. It still doesn't fit. There were two issues. Such is life. It happens. my greasy fingers all over this to try and hide some of the marks left behind though and to get rid of all the extra resin dust I guess there we go now it fits nice and flush B And now let's try it out. I think I should be good to go. But unlike the uh, left Joy-Con, I'm going to actually test it and uh, make sure it works without having to back off the screws. So B still doesn't click. A is perfectly fine though. So yeah, my issue with A was that it just wasn't sitting flat, not that it needed to be sanded down. B is still no go though.
but that's easy enough. you're worried about how it looks, which I should be a little bit more worried about how it looks, being clear shell and all, and clear buttons, you can always give the back of these buttons a quick coat of clear coat spray paint. But I think it's going to be fine. I don't think it's going to be that noticeable. If it's noticeable at all. Of course, this screwdriver is not magnetic, though. There we go. I'm going to take off just a hair more, though. Because there's, I don't know, I want a little bit more travel. It works, though. Just it's not up to my satisfaction. And it's so much easier to fix now than later. Another thing that would help, instead of sanding on top of my silicone mat, if I were to put this right on the desk, it would not only sand faster, but it would probably be flat as well. Instead, I'm introducing a slight curve to the back of the button. It's not that big a deal at all. But, you know, just, just food for thought, I guess. While I'm doing this, I guess, um, I bought Astral Chain when it came out, and I do upload these videos, for the most part, right about when I film them. So it's it's October 1st today. Still haven't beaten it. You saw how far it was. Chapter 5 or something. I think there's only like 14 chapters. So I'm a third of the way through the game or whatever, but that's a legit game. I really like it. I'm, I'm glad I picked it up. Oh, that's perfect. I never tested the plus button, but that's pretty good too. Yeah, and you can't even tell that I sanded it down. Looks the same as the rest of the buttons. But yeah, super glad I picked up Astral Chain. Very nice game. Okay, let's put this back together. We need a joystick. On that note, since I have an RCM button installed in my Joy-Con, it's pretty obvious that my Switch is uh, not only an exploitable model, but if I went through the effort to do that, it's probably exploited. I think that's a safe assumption, and if you made that assumption, you would be right. I do gotta hop on my pedestal real quick, though, or my soapbox here. Piracy on the Switch is no bueno. It's no good. If you're a Switch pirate, you're not cool in my eyes. Custom firmware for uh, homebrew, on the other hand, that's the shit right there. You run emulators. You can uh, dump your games, install them. And yes, I am aware that there is very little difference between a pirated game and a legit game that you own dumped and installed on the Switch. The difference is I actually paid for my shit. 
why do I feel this way? Well, because the Switch is still on shelves. You can just pop on down to your favorite game store, pick up the, uh, pick up whatever the hell game you want. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick up a light switch or a switch light. I keep calling it a light switch because that's funnier, but that's not the name. <laughs> Piracy on consoles like the Wii, though, that are pretty much dead at this point. You know, who, who gives a shit? You're not hurting anyone by pirating on that. I still can't say I recommend it. But, you know, it's your decision to make, ultimately. I'm just saying, while I'm on my soapbox here. Piracy on the Switch itself. Probably going to have to pause the video pretty soon. The phone might make that decision for me, though. We'll just let it roll, see what happens. Yeah, I hate this part. This part's such a pain in the ass. I'm sure there's an easy way to do this. I'm sure there's a YouTube video. Or I'm sure if you do this more times than I have, which is literally more than once, it gets a lot easier. There we go. Alright, I think that's in. Is it in yet? Yeah, sure. Okay. Ooh, maybe that's my issue. There's a big ol' scratch on that thing. <laughs> I definitely got a little crazy with the tweezers last time. Oh, before I screw this down, I gotta put this back in. the camera decides I'm done, I'll let it cool down and I'll try and pick up where I leave off. Oh shit, did I plug everything in? I think I did. We'll find out in a minute, I guess. Record time, by the way. Phone usually overheats by now. Noise. Alright, so I'm not even going to bother screwing it in. But it's not working. I think I broke it again. <laughs> Alright, so full disclosure, I did something really dumb with the uh, plus button, and I didn't realize it until I had it nearly back together. Um, but the button is keyed, despite the shape. Yeah, I know, right, Nintendo? What the fuck? Um, and it does only fit the one way. 
or maybe two ways, I don't know. Either way, it didn't fit the way that I had it. So I had to kind of take this thing apart again, but it fit and um, I started sanding it down. Then I looked at it and went, oh, mother, there are keys in this thing. I must have just had it in wrong. So I popped it back in and it seemed to work fine. And by the way, to get that battery out, I totally took a shortcut and it worked excellently. So I'm going to share. Pop these two screws out for the shoulder button and then you can kind of slide this over a little bit and then you can loosen that screw and then you can flex the board and the casing enough to slip that out without having to take this whole darn thing apart. So I did that while the camera was cooling down and I think we're good now. Oh, this one doesn't have to. Oh yeah, it does. There we go. And this goes back together like that, more or less. And the reason my buttons weren't working is because that plus button was stuck down, or at least the reason that wasn't coming back on is because those were stuck down. But it's working now. I'm going to try and tuck that fuse in. Hindsight, that thing should be insulated too. The fuse itself shorts on something, we're going to have a problem. So this is not going back together. Oh, I know, I think I know what it is. This stupid ass antenna fell out of place. There we go. Alright, so instead of putting in a jank ass Phillips screws, one of which is broken, I have my box of Game Boy screws, and while I was cleaning up the other day, I found this little bag of screws here, which um I don't know I don't know where they're from. I mean clearly I bought them, but I don't remember buying them. But they're uh Joy-Con screws for the Nintendo Switch. Well, not like there are many other Joy-Cons. But what I mean to say is they're a tri-point. So they'll match my other controller. And that made a noise and then went in too easily. So I think something broke. Probably the screw post. Don't you love these cheap ass housings? Seriously though, I, I, I do love the clear. It's so cool. Why Nintendo doesn't make these themselves is beyond me. enough screws for the other Joy-Con, and then some, but the other Joy-Con already has screws, so we'll leave it be. And I'm going to put these three screws, eh, we'll throw them in that section there. Till next time. All right, let's try it out. So that obviously works. That works. That wonderful glare, but that works. Let's do... Isn't there a calibration or test or something? Test input devices. So yeah, all my buttons are working. Yeah, 
and I can screenshot, and we can go home. Oh, I didn't test the... Um, these buttons are kind of a pain in the ass to push without the uh, grip thingies but they all work so yeah I would call that a mission success and now I can go play Astral Chain with my super cool buttons so uh Thanks for watching, guys. I think that came out pretty cool, and uh, thanks again to Mad Morta for making and shipping these wicked cool buttons. Uh, unfortunately, she's got some life stuff going on, so she's not making these buttons anymore, but she still does have a shitload of them in her inventory, so she might still be shipping them at the very least. Um, I don't know the best way to get a hold of her, except through the BitBuilt Discord, and you'll have to find a link for that. Um, it's it's on the website. It's not that hidden, but you have to look for it. It's not right up front and center. But either way, I'm very happy with these buttons and the amount of modification that it took to get them working. Honestly, it's kind of surprising. I expected to have to work a little bit more for it, but they came out very nice. I'm super happy with these. So if you end up watching this video, Mad Morta, thank you very much. Super happy. Thanks for the uh, switch buttons and uh, the micro buttons. And um, to everyone else out there, thanks for watching. Have a good night.